Our next speaker comes from Canonical, an organization that is most well known for the commercial support it provides for Ubuntu Linux. But what you might not know, or what they're increasingly becoming known for, is uh, the first Linux distribution to provide commercial support for OpenStack uh, and for their continued support as a platinum sponsor of the OpenStack Foundation. Kyle McDonald is the Vice President of Cloud at Canonical, and he is uh, responsible for their uh, cloud business execution. So he is here today to talk about the open cloud collapsing the layers. Kyle, come on up. Well, thank you very much for having me. So, uh, uh, this is great. It looks like we have a packed room for what is the first cloud open, and uh, Canonical was very lucky to be able to come here and speak. Oh, wow. Okay, so we're going to watch our presentation uh, go backwards here. This is awesome. Okay, well, we'll start with this. So, uh, please excuse the minor interruption. Wow, we're actually... Wow, we, this is going to be fun. Um, so one of the things I wanted to talk to you a little bit about today is, uh, is kind of why Canonical is in the cloud and some of the things that we are doing uh, in the cloud. Uh, the cloud is a very nebulous word, uh, and so it means lots of different things to lots of different people. One of the things that's interesting for Canonical is that we actually spread across a number of different parts of the cloud. We provide a consumer cloud experience in our Ubuntu One product. Uh, this is something that we ship with every copy of Ubuntu and, and it's connected to an online service. Um, millions of users actually interact with it almost every minute. Uh, we know this because when sometimes it breaks or it goes down, they call us. And so uh, we've learned a lot of lessons about how you build things uh, at cloud scale and how you build them for consumers and then also how you build great infrastructure that goes behind them. Um, as part of that, we have also built a very powerful a uh, set of server infrastructures that give uh, a set of great developer experiences. Um, this shows up most notably in us being the uh, most widely deployed cloud guest uh, across leading infrastructure as a service providers. Um, so if you went to companies like Amazon, uh, Google most recently, Rackspace, uh, and others, you would find that the most popular guest um, is Ubuntu. Uh, in one form, shape, or another. And uh, this is a, a very interesting thing. What's actually the best testament to that uh, is that the Microsoft Windows Azure Cloud, which uh, came out in beta in June, um, one of the first demonstrations that Microsoft did uh, of their Windows Azure Cloud was actually firing up an Ubuntu instance. Um, incidentally, they did this from a MacBook Air, so lots of things have changed for Microsoft. but. Uh, we thought that was a, a, pretty, a pretty significant testimonial to, uh, to kind of the ubiquity of Ubuntu in the public cloud. Um, so with us being a guest instance that's very widely deployed, we're also a platform that's widely deployed. So uh, I'll give you a little bit of background about what we're doing with OpenStack and some of the technical things that we're doing there. Um, uh, but it's most interesting to note that almost all of the OpenStack installations that are out there today uh, based on just the fact that Canonical started early with uh, Ubuntu and OpenStack, uh, most of those OpenStack installations are actually running on Ubuntu. So we are uh, very quickly becoming a platform and infrastructure provider at the bottom. There we go. Um, so with Ubuntu Server, one of the things we focused on has been a very careful model of being a scale-out server platform. So uh, rather than spending a lot of our time and energy uh, focused on trying to build very high availability enterprise database solutions uh, that support some of our friends like Oracle. We've instead focused on building solutions that uh, support uh, much more developer focused code, things like Hadoop uh, and some of, the, um, some of the other projects. I'll walk you through a couple of examples of how we do that. But uh, when you start to look at the numbers, uh, as we made this shift and we sort of made focusing on uh, scale out server workloads a priority for us, uh, um, kind of the numbers have supported that, that people have actually uh, endorsed and chosen that. And so I think we're, 
we're at the beginning of a, uh, a fun run. Um, so let me talk to you uh, a little bit about kind of some of our partners and how we're doing some of these things. Uh, Ubuntu has partnered quite heavily with HP. Um, and so uh, you can now get uh, HP servers uh, that have support for Ubuntu. Um, and Ubuntu is considered a, a tier one supported operating system uh, on the HP server platform. So this means that you can now safely deploy and, and confidently deploy Ubuntu within your enterprise data center, um, knowing it will be supported by Canonical and, and HP together. Um, and this is really cool. This is one of the first, uh, this has been a big step for, for Ubuntu. Um, we are also, and I'll mention this probably again, because uh, it's one of the things I think is super cool, uh, we are the platform that supports uh, and, and is the infrastructure for the HP public cloud. Um, so together with OpenStack, uh, uh, OpenStack plus Ubuntu makes the, the base of the HP public cloud um, that is becoming incredibly popular. Uh, so if you haven't tried it, please make sure you go try it out. We also have a very significant partnership with Rackspace. Uh, and I'd like to make sure and highlight this. Uh, so Rackspace was, was the company that um, I think, uh, well, they started OpenStack. Let's just be honest about it. Uh, they put a very significant amount of resources around it. And so Canonical, uh, from the very early days of OpenStack, uh, has made a point of partnering with Rackspace to make sure that we could get a great OpenStack uh, story out into the world. So uh, OpenStack was a great cloud platform together with a great and ubiquitous server platform. Um, there's a great story there. Uh, you'll see more coming out from us, but the uh, you can start to see some initial parts of this. The uh, Rackspace Cloud uh, heavily uses Ubuntu. Um, the new Rackspace Private Cloud solutions, which provide you an OpenStack distribution that you can use in your data center, uh, which is modeled after the work that Canonical did with our OpenStack Ubuntu Cloud infrastructure, um, all built on Ubuntu, all built on KVM, and deployed by customers today. So uh, as you start to look at OpenStack and as you start to talk about OpenStack, People are using it, it's popular, um, and that comes from the support and, and work that we've done with companies like Rackspace. Um, Canonical also has uh, done significant work around building Ubuntu with Dell. Uh, and so we've released a very similar solution with Ubuntu, um, or with Dell, called the Ubuntu Cloud, uh, or sorry, the Dell OpenStack Ubuntu Cloud Solution. Uh, it's a mouthful, but basically means you can go to Dell and get a complete soup to nuts OpenStack implementation. Um, I'm telling you these things, not actually, I'm going through them, and they kind of come out sounding like a sales pitch. So let me just be a little bit clear here. Uh, the message I want you to get from all of these things is actually two things. Number one, uh, lots of cool people are deploying Ubuntu, and it has become one of those things that you can now count on as an enterprise uh, and infrastructure developer. Um, but number two, I want you to hear about the people who are putting serious bets behind OpenStack. Um, because I think OpenStack is a, is a very, we're going to go through why we think OpenStack is great, but I, I think the most important message that you can be getting out of this is that all of these other companies are putting serious bets behind OpenStack. And so if you are looking to do cloud today, OpenStack is your thing. Um, a couple of areas, these are things that we've already talked about, but places where you can find Ubuntu uh, and cloud and OpenStack in action today include HP, we went over this, uh, the Dell OpenStack Ubuntu Cloud solution. Um, also, telcos and service providers are hugely embracing OpenStack. So companies like AT&T, Deutsche Telekom, uh, Orange, and we'll go through a special one in a few seconds, and then leading cloud providers, Amazon and Rackspace. Um, a couple of the firsts, these are things, and then these are a couple of the things that are coming next. Uh, also, I should tell you, we have Ubuntu 1210 coming in October, so, um, we have lots of cool things you should be paying attention to in the future. Just stay tuned, there's cool stuff coming. Um, so one of the first things I wanna let you know is we were the first company to actually uh, build and sell an OpenStack product. So we've been doing this for two years. So uh, when you're going to look to do OpenStack, you can trust that the OpenStack packages you're getting from Canonical and Ubuntu have actually been tested and used by customers. Um, we're also building the Ubuntu Cloud Archive project uh, and we're building some technology with Juju and Maz that let you do some cool stuff. I'll show you in just a second. I'm going to speed up here. Um, so one of the things I wanted to talk to you first, one of the cool things I wanted to announce to you, um, 
is uh, one of our partners, customers, collaborators. They cover many different words, but DreamHost. We've been doing a very significant amount of work with DreamHost. Um, for those of you that don't know, DreamHost was started back in the 90s. Uh, they have 337,000 customers, uh, and they do all of the stuff you need out of a hosting company. Um, next week, they will be announcing the DreamHost cloud storage solution. Uh, this, is the, um, this is a big deal. They are going for an at scale, very well implemented cloud storage solution uh, built on Ceph, uh, supported by Ink Tank, a company that uh, they have just recently spun out. Uh, and all of this, this entire bet for their next generation product is all built on Ubuntu 12.04. Um, so we're very excited about this. This is one of the first large scale storage implementations. Um, and it's also one of the first large scale storage implementations that you can easily reference and get the code for and see coming from Ceph. So um, I would tell you, Ceph is arriving and you should be paying a lot of attention to it. Uh, one of the other cool things about the Ubuntu cloud story is that we get to talk a lot about next generation cloud companies. Um, and when we talk about next generation cloud companies, it's kind of a nebulous word, but uh, my favorite one is actually Instagram. So Instagram took Ubuntu, uh, they took our 11.04 version, uh, together with thousands of instances at EC2, uh, they built the very popular service that we all know, love, and use. Uh, if you went and asked them what allowed them to build the actual functionality that they needed as fast as they did, they would tell you it was because Ubuntu gave them a great developer environment. Um, so we listened to all of the things that they asked for, and then we started figuring out how we could help build them better technology. So we built Juju. And I'm going to skip through a little bit of this because our slides are very happy with us. So if you look at Juju, this is a map of a bunch of applications that you would probably have if you were a company like LiveFire or a company like Instagram. These are two of our next generation companies. These are things you sort of already know. Hadoop, MySQL, uh, Nginx, Tomcat, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. These are all a whole set of next generation apps. These things move very quickly. The packages come out uh, sometimes overnight, sometimes twice a day, sometimes once every six weeks. Um, they also come with very hard to implement instructions, right? You have to sort of know how to put all of these things together, and that's a little bit complicated. Um, we've had a lot of technologies like Chef and Puppet that have made that easier, um, but you still have to know a lot to sort of be able to do one of these. And to be able to do one of these at scale, and the sort of scale that uh, Instagram was doing with 14 million active users, uh, which is insane, um, takes a lot of work. So we spent a lot of time looking at a model of this. This comes back to this next generation scale out kind of world. This is very different than your three tiered Oracle, uh, Java sort of world where you knew exactly how the components were. This could be many disparate components, many disparate versions, many different ways of connecting things. So we looked at how we could take that entire this entire set of applications, this entire set of connected services, and make them easier. Uh, in order to do that, we built Juju. So Juju is a language and an orchestration framework technology. You can call it many things. But basically, it makes uh, the process of deploying a large-scale application on the cloud, or on your metal, or on virtual servers, very easy. We do that by creating a technology called Charms. Charms go through and they're basically, think of them as crowdsourced ways for describing how to deploy technology. So for example, in this case, uh, if you looked at this charm, there's a charm for MongoDB. And we will tell you how to install MongoDB. Um, and it comes in a, a very nice and neat text file. It's very easy to read, sort of. It will say how to install it, where to install it, uh, what you're going to install it with, the configuration parameters that work best, the directories that you want to use, all of these kinds of things that you need to do. You also can build into the charm uh, how you want it to connect to other charms and how you want it to connect to other servers, how you want it to be deployed, all of the details of that. You then encapsulate this, all of these details are in a charm. And this allows you to then go and say all of your 
all of the different parts of your application. So in this case, let's say this is a simple application that's MongoDB and the Subway application for IRC. You can connect all of these things together uh, and with a couple of very easy commands, because you've got Juju already talking to your cloud, you can easily deploy all of these to any cloud provider, and then you can move them to any other cloud provider. This means that you don't have to spend as a developer a bunch of your time going through and figuring out how to go deploy each of these on the next cloud that you come to. What this really allows you to do that's actually the coolest part of this is that you can easily develop your applications in one place using charms, using Juju, understand how you're building them. You can easily test those applications uh, and then you can easily deploy them. And you can do that as uh, in a consistent experience on your laptop, on the cloud, and on the metal. So using Juju, you're deploying the exact same way everywhere. Um, so as I wrap up, I wanted to cover just a couple of, of uh, quick things. So um, you're going to see more technologies like Juju, and you're going to see us spend a lot more time talking about Juju. Uh, when we release 12.10, uh, I think Juju is going to be one of the things we talk the most about. Uh, and the reason that we're talking the most about it is because we think there's power in supporting the developers. Um, so very early on, Ubuntu and Canonical focused on a tagline of uh, building Linux for human beings. Um, so we're going to do the same thing, but we're doing cloud for human beings now. And cloud for human beings means technologies like Juju that make developing and deploying applications easy, reliable, and something that you can sort of do without having to know the details of what's going on underneath. Um, we think that's pretty exciting. Uh, and then to kind of wrap up, uh, so I'm supposed to give this as our marketing, uh, our marketing slide. So wherever you are in the process, um, Canonical and Ubuntu are actually helping you there currently. So if you're already deploying clouds, we have uh, a number of solutions that can help that make that easier for you. If you're thinking about deploying clouds, uh, we have a number of people who can help you build things like jump starts and help you deploy clouds internally. Um, and if you're already in the process of deciding, we have a whole team of people and a whole set of technologies that are actually going to make that easy for you. Um, so uh, we have a booth and we have uh, a bunch of technical people. I'll be here for the rest of the session and we'll look forward to talking with you.